February 19, Army Camp near Vaucouleurs. This morning, I awoke to visions of fire and steel. These nightmares come more often now that I have seen my beloved France eaten away in years of war. I wandered through camp, ignoring the new snowfall, but observing the wounds and weariness of every soldier under my command, observing the desperation in their eyes. It was then that I first saw the girl. She told us that her name was Jeanne. She told us she was but a peasant who did not know how to ride or fight. She told us that she intended to rescue France. The darkness lifted from the men's souls. Her voice rang with conviction and we drank in her every word. I may have lost my faith, but Jean has not lost hers and that is enough for me. Jean has asked our ragged band of soldiers to take her to Chine, where the rightful ruler of France, the Dauphin, hides from his foes. The war-torn land between is infested with enemy marauders, and we will lose many men. Death is by now an old companion, but for Jean, we will face it again. My colleague and I will escort you to the Chateau of the Dauphin, or else we will die trying. I am Jean Demet, and I will protect you with my life. You are Jean of Arc. I have heard your claims and believe what you say. We will follow you to Chinon. Wait, you might have need of a few archers on the road ahead. You must be wary of the road ahead. Our enemies, the British, are out in force, and their Burgundian allies are thick as rats. Discretion is the better part of valor. to the north. Best to go another way. Look out! Another glorious loss for France. I hope you really can turn the tide of this war. We must find another way to Chinon. Hey, women playing on hitless travelers? What has become of our homeland? Hey, 
Hypergondian encampment. We'll never get through that wall without siege equipment. Condion soldiers everywhere. Hurry west to the river where we can make our escape. Chateau of the Dauphin.
As Jean's footsteps echo down the marbled hall of the chateau, the fat and whispering dukes did not but stare. The Dauphin himself seemed afraid as she kissed his feet. My gentle Dauphin, she demanded, why does England claim what is ours? Why are you not crowned King of France, as is your right? The courtiers began to murmur. The Chamberlain whispered lies into the Dauphin's ear, but the Dauphin pushed the Chamberlain away and rose to meet Jean's gaze. She stands only to the shoulder of the shortest man, but all of us must look up to speak to her. I know not what silent conversation passed between the Dauphin and his would-be savior, but it was obvious that His Majesty was in the same thrall as we. <laughs> 